Hello and welcome to episode two of the Real Entrepreneur Hustle with me, Steve Woody. And today I'm going to be talking about motivation and specifically money and how money can motivate you and the good and the bad around money. So it's a bit of a taboo subject. Nobody really likes talking about it. So I'm just going to deal with it because it's part of the BS that we deal with in the entrepreneur world and we need to overcome it. And it's something which when I was starting out, I wish this information was available to me. So I'm, I'm kind of humbled now that I get to share this and hopefully if you're just starting out on your journey or maybe you're quite established on your journey and it's sometimes good just to revisit this information. So I'm going to keep it short, it's about 15-20 minutes and I'm just going to cover some things that hopefully will help you, give you something to take away that you can do today to make a difference. So let's get started. Today is all about money mindset and what I mean by that specifically is as an entrepreneur, when we look at what an entrepreneur is, it's a problem solver. We solve problems, we fix things, we add value into the world by solving problems. And as a result, we get paid for that value that we add. So the challenge that I often see is either entrepreneurs don't value themselves as much as other people maybe do, and so they don't charge what they're worth. They'll either work for free or they'll work very cheap to be able to build up the reputation, to be able to build up the case studies, to be able to build up uh, the experience that they need. And that's fine, I totally get that. But what they're then doing is they're educating their clients to not pay them very much money, and that self-worth stays quite low. And then on the other end of the spectrum, what I see in the entrepreneur world, are people with no experience, with no real value to add, with no real content, and yet they're charging a fortune. They're telling you that they're charging a thousand pounds an hour and their course is worth five thousand pounds. And if you just pay them another three or four thousand pounds on top of the three or four thousand pounds you probably already paid them, like this sales funnel of just like how can we bleed more money out of people? I see this as well, and that's neither are right. You know, not charging anything can charge in too much, they're both wrong. You need to find the balance, you need to find that sweet spot where you can charge what you're worth. And at the end of the day, and this is something that I tell everybody, all of my clients, all of the, my friends, the people I work with, what you think you're worth is actually irrelevant because it's what the marketplace thinks you're worth. It's your perceived value. It's what people are willing to pay you. If you're charging yourself out at £10,000 an hour and you've got no customers, then you're not worth £10,000 an hour. It's as simple as that. You need to understand that if you're worth £10 an hour, that's what you're worth. 20, 50, 100, 1,000 pounds, whatever your rate is, your cost. And let me just preframe this by saying now that an hourly rate isn't necessarily the best way forward. If you've got services, then people, they expect you to have an hourly rate because that's how people justify the cost of something. How, because people value, right, let me just say that people value their time. Okay, time is more valuable than money. You can't get your time back. You can always earn money, but you can't get your time back. Therefore, we judge the value of something based on time. That's why we have our hourly rate. If something costs £10 an hour, then you can say, I know it's going to take an hour. I know what an hour is worth to me. Therefore, and I'll give you an example, having a cleaner. Now, this isn't, I'm not trying to be sort of, you know, singling out cleaners here, but I'm just saying that in my world, where, where I am right now with my perception, and what I charge on an hourly basis to help people in their business, it doesn't justify me to spend three hours cleaning up my apartment. It doesn't justify me to spend three hours cooking food. There are things that I might enjoy and I might want to do, but when I look in terms of like my time and the value of my time, if I can earn 250 pounds an hour, and I can pay a cleaner 10 pounds an hour. Obviously it makes more sense for those three hours for me to be working in my business than to be cleaning my apartment. The same goes for cooking. That time, it, it, that, that hour or two hours a day that it takes, that's 10 hours a week. If I was charging 100 pounds an hour, that's a thousand pounds. If I could be charging a chef 200 pounds a week to do my food, then Effectively, as long as I'm working, you have to still be working. You can't have a chef and not be working because that doesn't really, doesn't work. You need to understand that if you're going to be working for those hours when somebody else is working for you and doing something for you and you're earning money, if I'm earning 100 pounds an hour for 10 hours a week 
and a chef's charging me 20 pounds an hour, then I'm gonna be saving myself 800 pounds a week. That's the way you have to start looking at things. And it's the same when you're buying things. When you're buying things, you need to look at them, we spoke about this last week, as an investment, not as a cost. And you always need to be looking for a return on your investment. And we're just continuing that this week. But we're looking more within you and your business and what you do, the value that you add, what you're doing in the marketplace. Because I'm gonna tell you this now, and this may upset a few people, and I understand that, but the reality is that not everybody's going to be successful. A lot of people, a lot of you, if you're starting out on your entrepreneur journey, you may, you may probably, you probably will fail. And I hope you prove me wrong. But the reality is that one in four people will fail as soon as they start up. Three in four people will fail within the first 18 months. That means only one in four will succeed to the two year point in business. That's why when you look into internet marketing, people are constantly reinventing themselves, constantly changing things, constantly putting new products, new services, new offers, new businesses out there. They're constantly failing and they're learning by that and they're improving and they're going forward. Now, if you're a consumer, you don't want to buy into something that's potentially going to fail and that's why I'm very skeptical around buying digital products in the online world, specifically around internet marketers, because I know that they're constantly changing, going wherever the best commission structure is. Same for sales and marketing. It's why you need to ask yourself the question, why are you in business? Are you in business just to earn money? Because if you are, then you're probably not going to be successful. You may have some short-term wins and some financial gain up front, but for being sustainable and for being scalable and for being long-term, you're probably gonna fail. And I say that with love because I don't want you to go down that rabbit hole unless obviously you want to do that. Because here's the thing, you can make mistakes, you can learn by those mistakes, and that experience can help make you a better person. But if you wanna be truly wise, if you really want the best competitive advantage, then you will learn from other people's mistakes. When other people have made the mistakes and they're telling you about it, like what I'm doing now, when you learn by this, when you actually apply this and realize this and it becomes part of your habits, you're like, I'm not gonna make those same mistakes that that person made. When you can become that person, you will go further faster because it will not be as expensive, it will not be as stressful, it will not be as time consuming because you'll have learned. That's why so many of the successful people out there read books. They read books and they take all of the mistakes that people have made and they make sure that they apply the winning formula and not the mistakes into their own lives and their own business. It's why I want you to understand what you're doing. It needs to have a greater purpose. If you're just after money, you may get money and you may be quite successful. I know some people that have chased money and have been very successful in doing that. The result now, however, is that they're not fulfilled. They don't feel passion. They don't feel like they've created a legacy. They don't feel like they have anything substantial to show for it other than a nice bank balance. And let me just tell you this, if you're in business just to make money, like just to make money, then chances are you will make money. But it's not gonna fulfill you, it's not gonna make you feel great, and after a while, you'll start to question why you're doing what you're doing. I've seen it time and time again. So you need to understand that money is a byproduct of success. When you're successful in what you do, when you're motivated and passionate in what you do, when what you're doing adds great value to other people, money will come as a result. But money is a byproduct, it is not the focus. The focus is adding value. The focus is helping people. The focus is making sure that you're building a legacy, something that's sustainable and scalable, that adds great value to the world. And people are happy to pay for that. That's what you need to be focusing on. I always say, if you're in business, the only outcome of a business is to make money. And that is true. If you're not making money, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. However, we're not talking about the business today, we're talking about you. As an individual, as a person, as somebody who has meaning in their life that goes above and beyond what money means. You need to understand that you are not the financial currency that you hold up currency at the moment, whatever it is you have in your bank account, whatever it is you have around you, problems will always be there. Money will not solve problems. All money does is give you a different set of problems, but you will still have problems. And so it's worth understanding that the mindset that you have, 
being bigger than your problems, being able to deal with those problems in a way that an entrepreneur should, because as entrepreneurs, as I've said, that's what we do. We fix problems. And so you need to understand, and I'm just gonna tell you a very, very quick story, really quickly, about how I overcome some of the challenges that I had with money. See, back in 2011, in fact, it was October the 31st, 2011, was the last time that I declared myself homeless. As many of you know, I've spoken about this before, been homeless three times, and I lived in a car for six months at one point. So I've been to the bottom of the barrel, I've been bankrupt, I've been to a place where I've had no money, and as a result, I've built my life up from the ground, I've dragged myself out of the gutter. And so when I went to this event, it was, I got introduced to the personal development world in November. So I went to, it was called the Yes Group, I went there November the 16th, 2011, and as a result of attending that event, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase the story, I got given a ticket to attend my first seminar. It was by a gentleman called T. Harvecker, it was the Millionaire Mind Intensive. It was at London Ibis Hotel, it was on the 2nd till the 4th of December 2011. That was my first personal development seminar that I attended. And when I went there, I was so wet behind the ears, I was so naive. I was so hopeful, but I was so, I don't want to say stupid, but I just didn't understand. Like I look back now and I laugh and it's funny, but at that time I was just so hungry. And I remember I got there early and the reason I got there early wasn't because I was keen and because I wanted to learn. The reason I got there early was because I had this banged out old car, it cost me like 400 pounds. And I had it because at the time I just, I really wanted a car, it was really important to me to have that, to be able to get around to see my daughter. And my daughter was two years old at the time, and so having a car was really important to me. And so I had this car, but I didn't have any petrol in it. I couldn't afford to put the petrol in the car to drive it around. So the only way I could get to the Ibis Hotel, because I couldn't afford to train, I didn't have enough money for tube. This is where I was financially, so you understand. I had no money. I had to drive my car, before the London congestion zone kicked in, which is about 7 a.m. So I left at 5 a.m. to get into London. I drove into London on fumes, and I coasted my car into the hotel car park with no idea how I was gonna pay for it or how I was gonna get that car back out. Now, the reason that I did that was because every part of me knew that this was gonna change my life. I didn't know how, I didn't know why, I was naive. But I believed it, I believed it with such certainty that I was like, this is gonna make a difference. This is gonna change my life. And I remember I sat in the front row. I just had a standard ticket, but I managed to sweet talk to people because this is one thing I've learned in business. It is all about rapport. It is all about the relationships you build. I may be going to the cinema and queuing up to get my popcorn and I will still pay a compliment to the lady behind the counter because I might get a bigger portion. You never know. I am always polite, I always pay compliments no matter where I go because it doesn't hurt to be polite. It doesn't hurt, manners are free. And when you're nice to people, they're nice back. Nobody ever got a result out of being a dick. So when you're phoning up customer services, screaming and shouting, understand that they've already switched off. You're only gonna get help when you're helpful. You're only gonna have people nice to you when you're nice to them. So as a result, I was really nice to the lady at this event and I got upgraded to the VIP ticket. So I'm sitting at the very front in the center of this event. I'm the first person in the room. I'm so keen, I'm so eager. I'm talking to all of the event staff. I'm getting friendly with everybody. And what I realized is that there was about a thousand people in the room. It was a big event. And throughout the day, the speakers come on stage and they started educating us and it was all about money and the money mindset and the money blueprint and how in our mind we have like a thermostat and if you are suddenly at a place in your life like if you value yourself at this level like this is your financial level where you feel like you're comfortable if you drop below that if you have less money than you're comfortable with you will work the, the, the thermostat will kick in the heating will kick in, it will inspire and motivate you. That's why when you're comfortable, things don't get done. It's not until you're either desperate or inspired and you feel like you need to do something that you make that shift to make things happen. On the other scale, if you win the lottery and you don't feel like you deserve it, you'll self-sabotage and you'll lose that money. That's why sort of 70, 80% of the millionaires who have won the lottery, who have come into money quickly, have lost it again because they don't know how to deal with it. So you need to understand where your financial thermostat is. That's one of the things I learned from MMI. And it was interesting, the detachment of money. 
they had an exercise, I'm not gonna ruin it for you, you have to go to the event to find out, but it involved letting go of 50 pound, a 50 pound note. And it was quite symbolic, but at the same time, it meant quite a lot at that moment. And so I can see, going back through that experience, how I was so attached to money. Everything was about making money, I needed money, I had to have money. And I wasn't adding value, I wasn't looking at how can I make a difference? What can I do differently? And so at the end of the first day, when the speaker said, okay, you need to come back tomorrow, I remember standing up and I jumped up and I was like, what? How? I can't. And he's like, you have to come back tomorrow to find out how to apply the things that we're learning. And I said, I can't. Like, I really can't. I don't have the money for a hotel. I can't get home. I'm stuck. How? And he's like, you'll find a way. And I remember just thinking, what a pile of shit. I'll find a way, what crap advice. I was expecting to walk out of this room an entrepreneur with a ready-made business, making money. And now I'm in a worse place than before I started. I could have stayed at home and at least I would have had a roof over my head. Now I'm in London with a car in a car park, which I can't get out, with no money for food, with nowhere to stay. And that place, if you can just try and imagine my mindset at that time, it was quite low. I was in a really low place and I slept in my car in the hotel car park. In fact, it wasn't until the next day that a few of the other delegates realized that I slept in my car and they chipped in together to get me a hotel room. Now, at the time I refused because I don't like charity and I didn't want anybody to know that I wasn't successful. A lot of people do this. We see it on Insta Lives. We see all these social profiles where everyone's bigging themselves up to be more than they really are. A lot of people do it because it's our fear. Fear that they need money and they feel like this is the only way they can project themselves to be successful. It's why for so long now on social media, I've told the truth. I've been completely vulnerable, open and honest about all of the problems that I've gone through in business, in my relationship, in my personal life, in my business relationships, everything that's going on, I've been honest and open and I've shared the struggles. It's exactly why I'm doing this series right now to help inspire you to know that sometimes it's not always greener on the other side. Sometimes it's not always better because somebody else thinks it is. That new software that looks shiny isn't gonna fix all your problems. That person that says they can help you in your business isn't always going to be what they say they are when they're looking for the job. That relationship that you wanna get into, that partner, they're gonna be on their best behavior at the start. But it's what counts in the long term. It's the little things that you do. It's the sustainability. Can you do what you're doing every single day? Because if you have balance and you can do that, you will be successful. As long as you're doing just one little thing every day to move you forward towards your goals, that's all you need to do. This isn't a sprint, this is a marathon. And that's what I realized at this event. Everybody at this event was going out of the room for a break, and coming back into the room and learning, and going out of the room for a break, and coming back into the room and learning. And I was watching them just sitting in my chair, I didn't move, I didn't move from my chair, and I watched everyone going out for the break and coming back in, and I thought to myself, I need to do something different. I need to do something else that nobody else is doing because a thousand people doing the same thing, I'm gonna be fighting a crowd. And this is a, a great example of a story in the book called Blue Ocean Strategy. If you go into a blue ocean, it's beautiful. If you're the only person in there, but as soon as other people start fighting for clients, as soon as other people start fighting for that market space, the water gets blooded and it becomes a red ocean. There's all too many red oceans out there and everyone's striving to try and find their little blue ocean, their little part of paradise, where they have an abundance of clients who are interested in their product and service and they're the only person who's delivering it. And so that's what I was looking at. Where's my blue ocean? I didn't know it at the time. This is all with hindsight. And so what I did is I jumped up on the stage during a break. I ripped down a sheet from the, project, uh, from the flip chart. I sat outside the VIP entrance with a jar and I put, well, can build websites, will work for my education. And I busked outside the VIP entrance. I got about 200 business cards, about 16 pound in cash, which actually got my car out of the car park. But more importantly than that, Every single person, there was a thousand people in that room talking about me. I was the guy who busked outside the VIP entrance. I was the one who everybody remembered. And I was the one who went home that day and got my first paying client to build a website for. 
That's where I started my journey. That's where I transformed from doing it as a hobby to a business. That's when I registered my limited company. And that's where I started my journey that I'm on today. And I'm still growing and I'm still learning and I still make mistakes. But hopefully in what I'm telling you, you can understand some of the experiences I've been through. You can adapt them for your own business, for your own life and not make the same mistakes I have. Hopefully you can overcome that. So all I want you to do today just to wrap up, is just to focus on what are you doing to add value to the marketplace. Earning money is great, but money is a byproduct. I do not want you to focus on the money. I want you to focus on what value are you adding to people's lives? What difference are you making? And I want you to get a sheet of paper. I want you to get a sheet of paper and I want you just to start writing. I add value by. I make a difference by. I show up in the world by. I'm leaving a legacy because I'm. I want you to write down whatever it is that makes sense to you. What are you doing right now in the world to fix problems by adding value to help other people? And I'd love it if you could comment below this video. Let me know because I want to share in this. Me helping people is great, but I get the biggest juice and joy in my life when other people share what they're doing in theirs. If you're successful, if you're doing things, if you're motivated, if you're passionate, if you're inspired at the moment, then I want you to understand what it is that's driving that. And please share it. Because there's a lot of people who are going through shit and your story could help them to inspire or motivate them to overcome a challenge that they're dealing with at the moment. Because we all had to start somewhere. So just consider today to write that down. What is your purpose? And it has to be bigger than money. Money will come, money is a byproduct of success. You need to be successful in what it is you're doing. I wanna know what drives you to be successful above and beyond money.